Welcome to Crash Course in Commercial Real Estate. We converted our in-house training program to a podcast to teach you prospecting, negotiation, business planning, and other fundamental skills to become a successful commercial real estate agent. And now, here is your host, Brady Collier. And welcome back to our commercial real estate training course. Um, today we have Amanda Tolley with us. And if you haven't been with us before, I'm Brady Collier, broker of a commercial real estate company in Lubbock, Texas. And we are training Shannon Powell. And so today we want to talk about marketing our properties. And so Amanda does all of our uh, marketing for both our development company and um, specifically our brokerage company. And so I've asked her to come and walk us through the marketing process. So Shannon, this is going to be a, an important one and an immensely practical one. Um, uh, we, you've got a listings on what to do to get a listing and the listing process. But as soon as you sign up that listing, how do you actually take that property to the market to make sure it gets maximum exposure? Um, and how do you present those marketing systems in a listing presentation to win deals. So this is something that's going to affect you almost every working day for years to come. So I'm excited to do this with you and I'm excited to have Amanda here. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. All right, Amanda. So um, you gave me a few notes on the major areas of marketing and let's take them one by one. You started off with signs. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to come back to you on a question on our process with signs, but I'm going to first talk uh, to you, Shannon, about the value of signs. And this is an age-old real estate um, marketing platform, the the signage. And it's really important uh, for a few reasons. First of all, it's one of the most effective ways to market many types of property because when people want a shopping center space in such and such part of the market, a lot of times they get in their car and they drive out there to see what's available to see. And they, they just look for signs because that's the way it's been done forever. Now, millennials, 21st century, there's going to be a lot more phone searches and we're going to get into all the things people search for and how we hit those people as well. But a lot of the decision makers on real estate, they'll get in their car and drive. And so the sign is something that is great for your listings. Um, but it's also something that's great for your business. So when you have 20 signs out there in the market that says Shannon, um, that's telling the whole market I'm actively in the business and the types of signs you have out there, it promotes you as a real estate agent. Simultaneous, it's promoting the listing itself. So it ser- serves a dual benefit. Um, anything else you think of when it comes to signage as far as the benefit of signage or um, the exposure that it gives? It's really just the traffic, capturing the traffic right there. So it's the first time that people may realize something's on the market, is driving past it. They may not even know to look anywhere online, but you can always advertise right there on the street. So You can advertise on the street. And, and um, one thing about signage is, uh, depending on, and you've yet to, to say, this is my specialty. And so if you had, we would talk about signage for office buildings, signage for retail shopping centers, signage for land. Um, there are specialties where there's no signs or signs are never used. Can you think of anything? Sorry to put you on the spot here. Can you think of a time when a, a property listing or a type of property that you would not want to use a sign on like any type of listing of commercial real estate you're going to take to the market but but the client would not want a sign to go up in front of their real estate to market it as for lease or for sale when they want to keep confidential that they're on the market good yeah and so that's right and there's um, a few different instances where people wouldn't want the whole market to know Um, oftentimes we're working with restaurant clients and so say the restaurant client wasn't doing well and they needed to sublease their space, but they have to keep paying rent until somebody else agrees to do that. So if they were to put a big sign out there for lease, but they have an operating business that would tell all of their employees, they're about to shut their restaurant down. And so that's an instance for sure where, um, and that happens every day in Lubbock, Texas, where they don't use signage, but they do use some of the online marketing systems that we're about to talk to that would specifically only hit people searching for that particular space. So that's one instance. Another one, for example, would be um, multifamily. I was a multifamily broker for almost a decade, and never I never put one sign up in front of an apartment complex ever my entire career because the tenants would get nervous who are living in those apartment units and say, oh, there's going to be a change of ownership, a change of management. Are they going to – how's my lease situation? It causes anxiety in all the tenants. And so then they start looking for should I move, and, and it just – 
it's bad for so it's bad for the apartment. And so those would be two instances, just uh, examples off the top of our mind. Um, Amanda, let's talk about the process. Whenever she gets a listing and she wants to um, get signage up so that she knows how to prepare her client for that whole process, what does that look like? So anytime we get a new listing here, we start with mm -hmm. our standard new listing form. And that form will describe the property and all of the needs that you have for it. So if you want to sign, there's a place on the form that explains that you do want a new sign and are we putting it in ground or are we putting it on skids and just putting a bunch of sandbags on it. Uh, so it's really kind of what type of sign and then what we want it to say. So that's the first thing that we do in order to get a sign going and getting that manufactured and everything like that. Uh, but we can always sit down and talk about what the goals of the sign are. Do we want it to be general or do we want it to be really specific? Uh, so that's usually just a conversation that we have. I want to drill into a few things that she just said. Um, what type of sign and what, does she want, what do you want on the sign? And the reason she said, <clears throat> excuse me, do we want it on skids or do we want it in the ground? If it's a listing that's going to be you know, long-term potentially. It's a piece of land and it's out of the city limits of Lubbock. That may be a two or a three year listing. We want to put that in the ground, especially if there's no construction, nothing going on. There are times when we take a listing and it's a site under development. And so they're building a shopping center, they're building an office building and the construction's already started. On that, if you go put it in the ground, it, it never fails that three weeks later, some tractor needs to do something right there. And and those people don't care about your $800 sign. They will just run, they'll just take their lift it up out of the ground and just cast it aside. This happens all the time. It does. Even if it's on skids sometimes, instead yeah. of just moving it, sometimes they'll just run over it. It's mm -hmm. absolutely unbelievable. <laughs> and you're like, that was $800, really? <laughs> so um, in-ground is normally for more permanent listings. Um, uh, and sometimes, and then the size of sign is um, there are different prices for a four by eight versus a four by four and upright. And so Amanda, you know, offline can walk you through all the different types of signs and which ones are most appropriate and what's customary in our market um, and what that should look like. So that's type of sign. And then the other thing you said is what's on the sign. Mm -hmm. So I'll let you comment on that and then I'll make a few comments on that as well. Yeah, so we can go as general or as specific as you want. We have some signs here in the market that just say space available. And a sign like that can be used for a number of listings, a number of purposes. Uh, you can really recycle it and use it a lot. And it keeps a pretty general theme going so you can get a lot of calls and kind of explain what's going on if there are maybe multiple different options with that listing. If you want to do something really specific, we can do that as well. We have a listing right now that has an end cap drive through available, and that's a really hot item on the market right now. And so we really want wanted to capture somebody as soon as they were driving by because it's a new development, so it's not built. So if you were just driving by, you wouldn't know what it is. But if you see end cap drive through on it, you're automatically going to call if that's something that you're interested in. And so, the, thank you. That's really great. Um, so when you have one, you probably need to come to me and we need to talk about what are the goals. And so, for example, we had a client that has been with us for decades. They don't care what goes on the sign. They totally trust us with it. And on that one, Kyle just chose to use not even space. He just put the word available. And the reason he just put available, which is the most ambiguous thing you could potentially put on a sign, is of course it's available. There's a sign there. But it's because he wanted, if somebody wanted to buy, he wanted them to call and see if that was for sale. If they wanted to lease, he wanted them to call. He wanted to harvest the information of everybody who's out there driving, looking in that area, no matter what their needs are, so that we could go put together another development deal or to where he could talk to them about their needs. And then if they were a customer, not a represented by an agent, he could take them and go find another space. So he went really general for his sake and for our sake to harvest lots and lots and lots of calls. Cause if it says drive through available and you're an inline tenant, you're not calling on that space. Or if you're looking to buy something, you're not calling on that sign. So your but if signage, you're T to go, you're calling. Yes, it's T to go. Um, they're desperate to find drive throughs and there's only one or sometimes two on every shopping center. Hot commodity, as she said. So on those, um, is that on a right or is it on the actual sign? So that's on the actual sign, but you can customize the signs really any way you want. So we could put it on the rider, but typically the riders we focus on 
who to contact and how to contact them. Yeah, so it's normally your name and your contact phone number, whether it's office or cell, if you want your cell phone to be out there on every sign in town, or if you want the office, who can direct it to you. So um, there's normally the sign and then the rider beneath it. And then we can recycle the sign 10 times, and the rider is pretty cheap. We can throw it away and just get a new rider um, if we want something super specific. So that's probably enough on signage. Um, But signs are your friend because they build your business and they work for your client. So signs are great. All right, so she signs up a listing. She's going to get the form, Mm -hmm. and it's going to have signage. Do you want signage, and what do you want it to say? And then the next thing that you have here on the notes uh, for me is flyer. So um, what's the process on the form with the flyer, and how's that going to look for her? Right, so the form that I mentioned earlier, the top of it is completely dedicated to the property. And that information that's filled out there is what's taken and then I use to make the flyer. So what type of property is it? Where is it? The address? Is it for sale? Is it for lease? Uh, How big is it? All that information is just put there on the form just to make sure that we're all on the same page and we can make the process run smoothly. But then also we talk more than just about the details of the property. We also talk about what are we trying to convey with this property? Are we really trying to sell the building because it's a really great building or are we trying to sell the location or is it both? And so there's areas on that form also to kind of talk about what is what are kind of kind of the highlights of this property. And so that's kind of what's used to make the flyer. Yeah. Um, for example, you recently um, were working on that downtown office building. Amanda did the flyer. Um, our first run at the flyer. And in your opinion, you know, we kind of led the charge on that. But if you just looked at that multiple page flyer, what was accentuated about that building within the flyer? The look of the inside of the building, yeah. of the main office area. That's right, because the owner of that, it's absolutely spectacular. And so it's uncharacteristically spectacular for Lubbock downtown because a lot of woods and um, brick and just a super cool vibe. And so that's what Amanda accentuated because um, downtown aerials aren't, they don't help as much. I mean, people want to know the location, but with retail, you're going to have all these little logos of all of the other for co-tenancy and so on. So if it's a retail space, she may be accentuating co-tenancy with aerial maps or drone photography or something like that. If it's office, it may be, this is the place you're going to dwell pictures of the actual offices. So on every flyer, they're all custom. Um, and it just depends on what story you want to tell. And that's really important because Amanda walk through how often and in what ways will she use the flyer? Like what, what, where all is the flyer going to go? Right. The flyers used everywhere. It's, it's used on all of our online marketing platforms, but then it's also used anytime we go to, any type of marketing and and event where we can talk with other people. So we print them out. They're also emailed out to everybody. So that's really used in every aspect of, of marketing for that building. And that's really important because when you do the flyer, some people are in such a hurry because they have business and they have so much to do that they fill out the thing real quick and they get a B level flyer because she only had as much information as she had to work with. What that means is you're going to have to retell the story that could have been told on the flyer a hundred times through the life of that listing. So by not investing a couple of hours to really think through your flyer on the front side, you're committing yourself to hours of re-explaining the same thing over and over. Super inefficient use of your time. So focus on your flyers to tell the story really well. So whenever time you get an email or when you get a phone call, a signed call, you're like, hey, um, what's your email? Let me zip my flyer over to you. It's got a ton of great information. And that tells the story for you. Or if somebody texts you, if somebody emails, you can just reply with the flyer and set up a call and they'll have all of the basic information and you don't have to re-explain the story every single time. So doing the flyer well in the first run, it's it's worth your time invested. And as she said, it's going to go on an e-blast. It's going to go on each one of the websites that we're about to talk about. And you're going to email it out. Um, there's going to be print flyers. I mean, it's it's everywhere. So doing a great job on the flyer is, is a really important aspect of our marketing process. Um, I just mentioned the websites that it's going to go on. So Let's talk about them. You've organized these, so I'll let you run through our online marketing. 
when I first got into the business, there was still real realtor exchanges where all the old heads would go for lunch. Everybody would bring their flyers and everybody would pass them out and you would leave with a whole stack of everybody's flyers. And that's how people exchanged information. Nice. God bless the good old days. Uh, actually, these yes. are way more blessed days today than they were back then because that was a lot of work. Uh, today, it's just going to be out there on tons of websites and tons of you know marketing along those lines. So um, Amanda, she's going to check boxes, but... Um, depending on her goals with this project and uh, how much she wants to spend and all that on several websites. So do you want to walk us through those websites? Sure. Yeah. So the very first website we put it on and we put every listing on this, this site is our personal website. So naiwillhouse.com. And we always start with that one and we always make sure every listing's on that because that is a site that we control and it's a site that we don't have to pay for premium listings or anything like that. We just have total control of it. And then it also just shows if someone's on there for a different listing, they can go back and see all of our listings. And it kind of just helps show what our portfolio looks like and, and what we're doing in the market. So we start with that and we make sure to get the flyer up there, good imaging. And then we also do a lot of stuff with SEO, making sure that if someone drives by 101 Main Street, and they just are really curious about it. They go into Google, they type it in. We make sure that our website's the first or if one of the first websites to pop up on Google, just so that we can be right there in the forefront every time they search for a property that's ours. So once we get it on our website, we then put it on third party listing sites. And so there are a lot of them, but there's a few that are really big. So the first one that we're going to talk about is LoopNet CoStar. Now, when you're going through these, um, if you can, you, you said two things just a second ago that's really good, and I want you to um, comment on those two things all the way through. You said with NAI's website, we control it, and she doesn't have to pay to use. So on everything, every other website, if you could speak to those two issues of control and cost and why that's important to you as a marketing person mm -hmm. and why that matters to her, that would be valuable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and LoopNet CoStar is a good one to start with on control and cost um, because with LoopNet CoStar, they are the biggest platform in the industry and, and even in our market too. You know, each market is different, but... It is the biggest in our market and then nationwide and probably worldwide too. So they are a really big company. Um, they do provide a lot of traffic to your to all of your listings, but you do have to pay a pretty good penny uh, to get your listings shown on there. So you can have a free account and that free account gives you the ability to post listings and view listings, but it does not give you the ability to post and view all listings you do have to pay for what they call silver, which is technically just like a premium listing in order for it to reach more people and show up on every single search. So if, if Joe Blow is driving down the street and he searches and she's working hard for our website to be the first one that comes up on 101 Main for lease, if they Google that, we would love for our site to be above LoopNet. It's really hard to do that because yes. LoopNet is so big, so strong, so powerful. But if Joe Blow is like um, looking at real estate, he probably makes a little a loop net login so that he can look at it, but he can't see all the properties, but he doesn't know he can't see all the properties because of the way they've structured it. But if you have the upgraded, he can for sure see your property. So loop net controls the flow of information. And that's why we want our website to be there. So everybody can see your, all of your properties at no additional cost to you. Whenever I was in the business and using loop net, you know, over a decade ago, it was like $120 a month uh, for unlimited, um, listings. It was, it was great. Well, what's it cost approximately now? <laughs> if you were Loop to sign Net, do up, not sue us for this podcast. <laughs> if you were to sign up today and you wanted, uh, 10 premium listings and co-star access, you're looking at over $1,500 a month, 1500 a month. That's just for 10 listings. Like we were talking about, um, your two friends in the, um, here in the Lubbock market the other day. And those two ladies have 70 listings. Scott Walmack has something like that also. Um, Bo Tucker has that. And so to have unlimited, which is what we used to have for 120 bucks a month or whatever, it was awesome. But now that would cost an arm and a leg. So what they have to do is they have to rotate which ones are premium listings. We can go on to all this later and she can give you more details. But it's a super expensive way to get your properties out there. But it's also very effective for great listings that need the exposure. And you got to set the expectations with your 
customer because if they ever Google, if they ever search 101 Main and it's the owner that listed it with you in his property, he can't see it in LoopNet, you're going to get an upset phone call. And he's going to want to know why is mine not on LoopNet? And you're like, well, it is on LoopNet, but because I'm not paying $1,500 a month, you know, only so many people can see it. And it, and it turns into a serious conversation. So that's a whole nother can of worms we'll get into offline. It's expensive. And then you didn't then talk a little bit about control. Yeah. So you, you kind of mentioned control because we do rotate our listings in and out and it, and it does appear that you may have less listings than you do. Whereas something with our website, you can see every listing and it's very obvious and there's nothing really hidden. And so that's part of the control. And then also the other part of the control is just with getting leads and controlling that website traffic. And if we can get that website traffic to our site and we can get them to fill out the leads through our website, then we kind of control that data a little bit easier. What about CoStar? Um, do you control your listing information in CoStar or does CoStar control that? And as far as modifying your listing, updating it when there's right. price changes and so on, who does that work? Right. It's, it's kind of a fine line between you and CoStar. So CoStar and I talk on like a weekly basis. You know, they always want to know, well, how much is this and how much is this? So they're always trying to get that information so that they can control the information and they can be the people that know what's going on everywhere. So it's so kind of a So they can charge 1500 bucks per person. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a, it's a pain because they have some control, whereas we have 100% control. So that... Mm-hmm. So that's, I think that's probably enough on LoopNet. Yeah. Do, do you have anything else pressing on LoopNet CoStar? No, no. If we say anything else, it would come across negative, and I don't want to do that on the no, podcast. No, because they, and they do provide a significant amount of traffic. And so there is, it's definitely a very good tool. But because it got so expensive, a lot of competitors popped up in that space. Um, God bless the invisible hand and free market. Um, and Crexy is one of those. Yes. And so talk a little bit about Crexy. Yeah, so Crexy is a similar platform, but they operate very differently. They don't have uh, premium listings or anything like that. You can sign up for a free account and you can post and see every listing. So that's the main difference between them and Lo- LoopNet CoStar. Uh, Crexy does offer a pro account, and so you can get better visibility if you have a pro account, and you can maybe get a little bit more information as far as comps go if you have a pro account, but really you have access to all the tools, listings, leads, everything like that with just the basic Crexy account. So it's it's good to have that whether or not you're paying for pro. And Joe recently uh, bought pro for his business, which was, um, which is great. And I didn't believe him. Amanda confirmed this later. Whenever he told me the other day, he was searching for a certain property type and there was, he said, Crexy had more than LoopNet. And that was for an old, for guy, old head from way back. LoopNet's the 900 pound gorilla. I couldn't imagine it. Sure enough, I had the, him pull the search and Amanda pulled the search on two different accounts. And there was 200 and I don't remember the exact numbers. And I don't know if it matters, uh, 215 in LoopNet and 260 in Crexy total listings. So Crixie is becoming a place that has, uh, is known to have more listings because it's a lower cost option. Right. But it's, it's quality. I mean, it's an easy to use. Yes. Functionality is good. It's very user friendly. And I will say it is uh, heavy on sales right now. So leasing, you might see more listings on LoopNet in our market. But in our market with, with buildings that are for sale, you'll probably see more than LoopNet. Good. Um, the last thing is you probably know from just hearing realtors talk about residential in every market across the country, there's a multiple listing service where everybody dumps all of their uh, residential listings in. And anytime you want to go sell a house, you can go into the multiple listing, search for a three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, and it populates this whole list and you can do it by neighborhood. And everybody's used to talking about the multiple listing service, even if they're not in real estate. Um, Commercial historically has not been that way because he who controls the information controls the clients. And so a lot of times people wouldn't put their stuff out there. So that way, way back in the day prior to the internet, if you were coming to Lubbock, you had to call a commercial broker because they're the only ones who knew where all the listings were and all the details. Now there's more free flow of information, but there's still a little bit of that in commercial real estate controlling the flow of information so that you can harvest more um, clients uh, by controlling that. But there is, you put on here West Texas CIE, that's Commercial Information Exchange, which is their attempt to replicate a multiple listing service. Sometimes people manipulate it. They say, so-and-so company has the most listings in Lubbock. What they're doing is they're pulling up the Commercial Real Estate Exchange 
and they have the most listings in there. Therefore, they say they have the most listing in Lubbock in their marketing, which is just untrue because certain companies use this and certain companies don't. So do you find it to be a reliable source of data? I think so. There's What I've noticed is that there's a lot of people that use it if they don't want to pay to play on LoopNet and Crexy. If they just want to get their listing out there, if maybe they're a residential agent that has gotten a commercial listing, that's pretty much pretty much where they go first because it's just a more affordable option. It feels a little bit more of a local option. And so I feel like you'll see things on there that you may not see on some of the bigger sites like LoopNet and Crexy. Yeah. Yeah. So... That's the uh, online marketing. Um, there's a lot there. Do you have any, before we go on to additional marketing, do you have any questions on um, the flyers and posting them up to those websites for maximum exposure? I don't. Okay. Well, you will because as soon as you get a listing and you go through this several times, I mean, um, Amanda's going to work you through that and you're going to have a ton of questions. She's your point of contact there. She does a great job. Um, real quick, Amanda, as we tie this up, talk about other marketing systems, sign, flyer, the ways a flyer can get out there online. You have here some notes on a few other marketing that are uh, marketing efforts that are significant, and so I would say some one of them is even the fastest growing marketing in commercial real estate. Right. So we'll start with eblasts. We do eblast weekly here in our office, just for our properties uh, to go out to people in our CRM that match the type of people that we want to send that property to. So you've talked about the CRM and even probably looked around in it so far, but you'll see that there's, you know, tenants or brokers who work with specific tenants that have needs. And we will pull a report on people that match those needs and then send one of our properties out to them. And it's just a really quick way to get the online listing and the flyer pictures, all of that right into their inbox. And they can, you know, reply with questions. They can download the flyer. It's just a really easy way to reach a lot of people very quickly. So we do those weekly in our office, and we've seen some some good reser- results with them too. Okay, a few questions on that. Um, for her sake, where are you pulling the contact list? And you said sending it to the appropriate people. I'll comment on sending it to the appropriate people if you talk about where you're getting the contact list. Right. So we pull it straight from our CRM, and. In the CRM, which we can, I can sit down with you and kind of show you this later, but we have a specific place where it says email preferences. And that goes into, if this is somebody that you're putting in, in the CRM that doesn't want to receive email blast about specific properties, you can just put in there no properties. Or you can put in there if it's somebody that represents a tenant that is a retail tenant that only takes 20,000 square feet and more, you can narrow it down to that. And so that way we're not sending them a 1,200 square foot inline space that they would absolutely never even take five seconds to look at. And so we can kind of show you that later, but we kind of narrow it down to the type of property and the space needed. And that's really important for you and for our whole company because we work on a shared database. And a lot of the people who are out there watching may work on our private database, but we have a shared database. So if you don't, if you put in some retailer or their agent, when Amanda pulls that list, if you don't input accurately and take the time to do a good job on their cert, on their criteria, then our unsubscribe rate to our eblast goes way up if we don't have it. So if you're if they're an apartment broker and you're sending them retail spaces, they're going to unsubscribe immediately because they just want less junk mail. So when you put people in the database, you really got to be careful to put them in there in such a way where they get what's appropriate for their commercial real estate. Um, goals, desires, et cetera. So that was really good. And then if somebody does unsubscribe, is that something that she has to track or how is that in subscription? How does that work? Right. We do have a place in the CRM where you can mark that, but the really good thing is we do use constant contact and if they unsubscribe, we can't email them. So if it's not something that's going to slip through the cracks because it blocks blocks us from being able to email you them. You can't email them through your through e-blast, contact, but you correct. can still email them personally. But right. constant contact keeps them from getting our blast emails. Yeah, so it's a nice place to like double check that we're not emailing people that have unsubscribed. Yeah, good. Okay, um, last, um, and this is the one that I said I thought was is still a whole different world to me, but social media mm-hmm. and a discerning use of social media for marketing efforts. Do you want to um, speak to that? And then I'll ask some questions. Sure. So we use Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. So we use the main four ones right now. Well, LinkedIn is great because 
That's you, the time. You know, the people who are watching this are going to be like, wait, back then Facebook was a thing? Because, you know, three years <laughs> from now, who knows what it's yeah, going to be? The thing knows, at that time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, LinkedIn is great because the type of content we're putting up there, people want to see that. And that's what they're going to LinkedIn to see. And so we really like LinkedIn and making sure that we're posting on there. We use Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. And we post anytime that we get a big deal done, anytime that we have a new listing or any other agency news. And it's not necessarily to hopefully reach somebody that's looking for that specific type property. It's really just to help with your public relations and making sure that people know who you are. And if they see, you know, our post every now and then they can all of a sudden when they're thinking of commercial real estate, think of us. So it's just more of top of mind awareness rather than an e-blast where you're specifically trying to reach one person for a specific property. Yeah. I mean, uh, sometimes whenever you're talking about marketing, you'll talk about engagement and you'll talk about our, our company one versus our personal one and um, how engagement works on those platforms regarding who's posting and the type of content. Do you want to just comment yeah. briefly on um, engagement of people out there for her business? Absolutely. So we'll mainly talk about Facebook for this because Facebook and Instagram um, operate pretty much the same way here. Uh, a business page is going to get a significant amount less traffic than a personal page. And that's just the way that they've set it up. Um, they say that it's because they want it to be more of authentic connections with your friends. And so anytime you were to post something about work, you're going to get a significant amount more of engagement than we would posting it as a company unless we were to pay to advertise it, which still even that's not organic traffic. So it, it is important to make sure that you're using it wisely and, and not overspending or spending too much time on it because business profiles are not going to get as much traffic as your and I guess we saw that whenever you um, joined us you post on your personal page you had four or five hundred people like it and 70 people commenting and congratulating we posted on our business page and there was 10 or 15 people I mean, it was like significantly <laughs> less engagement on things like that at the same time I would caution you when friends on Facebook or other social media start trying to push their properties on my friend to friend account or they're pushing any other product. That's not what I'm there for. And so there's times I snooze them or whatever you call it. There's, you know, I, I sell them unfriend them for it, but I just don't want to see their post anymore. So I would say you got to be really judicious in the way that you use social media. And I think some people now just think social media is the answer to everything. I thought you made a great point. LinkedIn, the purpose is business. Mm -hmm. So people go there for business reasons. Facebook, I don't ever go there for business. So um, I would say social is... Uh, Everybody's still feeling that out. Yeah. And you got to be very judicious in your usage of it. Yeah. And really the goal, again, is just awareness. And, you know, it's just making sure that we're at least posting something and at least out there so that whenever people think of commercial real estate, they think of us. So. And I think it's also reasonable when the company um, does something. Hey, Shannon's our top new agent. She had a great month. Da, 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 and somebody else shares that or it shows up on her page. Mm -hmm. That's really great just for the PR aspect. Absolutely. Um, okay. That's uh, a lot on marketing processes. Uh, keep in mind that form that you're going to fill out when you get a listing. Um, and then for your first couple of those, you're going to go to Amanda and say, Hey, here, let me tell you about the listing. Help me fill this out. And you'll have an active dialogue about that. And then you'll get to where you do it real quick. And, um, it's not rocket science after that. Mm -hmm. So do you have any other questions for us? Yeah. All right. It's going to be fun. Yes. Good thing she sits close by me. Yeah, yes. she's about six feet away if you need something. <laughs> you can just make a paper plane and throw it to her. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us.